Annyeonghaseyo! 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 It's Ataya, and today's video is a master list. Yes, it is a master list of free resources for learning Korean that can get you from absolute beginner all the way up to intermediate, if not further. Ba -ba. And guys, while I was like doing research and finding all the new resources that have come out since I've been a beginner, I got so much nostalgia. Oh my gosh, I was like, is it 2016? Am I a beginner in Korean? Oh my gosh. It was a really nice feeling. It was also like, oh, I'm glad I'm not a beginner anymore. The first free resource I want to introduce you guys is actually a website where you can enroll in free Korean classes. And that website is Coursera. So Coursera offers different Korean classes for beginners that are offered by Yonsei University, which is one of the best universities in Korea. Songgyunguan University, which I think is rather popular among international students. I'm not too sure, but I think it is. And then I think it's St. Petersburg State University. So there's tons of different classes on Coursera offered by those universities. And there's actually even a few for intermediate and advanced. So I'm actually in the advanced class right now by Songgyunguan University. And I'm not gonna lie, it's more challenging than I was anticipating. Cause you know, it's free. So I thought it was like, oh, I thought free meant it was gonna be a little easier, but <laughs> I was wrong. I guess that's like a good sign though, right? So based on my experience with the advanced class, I would assume that the beginner's classes are relatively similar in that it's usually a recorded lecture with some reading um, and some homework and some quizzes. So if you pay for it, you get access to like feedback from the professors and you know, get like checked quizzes and stuff like that. But if you're doing it for free, which this is about free stuff, it's not like a full, full class, but it's really nice that it's structured. There's like video content and it's like, everything is just like a formal curriculum, if you will. So if you're one of those people that needs like the structure and you wanna be told, learn this, and then learn, oh wait, learn this, and then learn this, and then learn this, and then learn this, it'd be really, really helpful to you. And just, I guess, a good website to look into. But maybe you're like tired of all your Zoom lessons now, so you're not really into video lectures. Maybe you want like an actual textbook or you want apps, and that's where our next free resource, like, comes into play. Yeah, I was like, I almost forgot the idiom. But uh, that resource is the Sejong Institute website. So Sejong Institute's like a Korean language school and they have like culture centers like around the world. And they also have a website where they offer all this free like language learning content. They have a placement test. If you're someone who's been learning Korean for a little bit and you maybe like, maybe you're not a full full like absolute beginner, but maybe you're like an upper beginner, but you're not sure if you're actually like there they have online lectures that are shorter. They also have access to free textbooks. This is like, I should have started with that actually, but you have access to all the Sejong like textbooks, which they have a lot. They have conversation books. They have their general textbooks. When I was taking classes, like actual classes with the Sejong Institute, um, we were using the level seven books, I believe. And that was like for topic level four, which is upper intermediate. So these are books that like, they're not just thrown together. It's like they actually like took time to put them together and teachers really use them in the classroom. So you should definitely like take a look at them. Unfortunately, you can't download them or anything like that. You have to like view them on the webpage, but even still like you don't have to buy a textbook. Also, they have tons and tons of free apps and they're kind of like broken down into different skills, which I think is a little odd, but I mean, it's free. So, it's fine, but they have like a grammar app and the speaking app and like all these like different skill specific apps. And on their website, they actually have like a little table that shows you like, if you want to improve this skill, get this app. Or if you're at like an intermediate and you're wanting to learn more conversation stuff, get this app. The next resource I want to talk about is a little bit more popular and I've talked about it multiple times on my channel. So if you've been here, well, you will probably already know about it. Or maybe you found it by yourself. Cause like I said, it is a very popular website just in general general when you type in like how to learn Korean for free. So yeah, that website is howtostudykorean.com and guys, I cannot like describe into words how much I love this website and how many times it saved me. Like when I was studying abroad in Korea, taking Korean classes and everything was in Korean, which might I mention was the first time I was ever learning Korean in Korean. Like there were times where I would walk out of the classroom after my three hour long class and be like, oh, I don't know what just happened. Like we would learn so many grammar points. Like guys, in one class, we would learn four grammar points, four. I, that's not even an hour per grammar point. So I would walk out of there so confused. And so when I would go to the cafe and I would study, this was definitely like my go-to resource. I was like, help 
me understand <laughs> like the grammar explanations on how to study korean.com are so thorough they have so many example sentences they really break things down like it's not just like oh it means this it's like this means this because in chinese this and this or because this word has this like meaning and they really break it down so if you're a grammar junkie like me and you want to know all the ins and outs it's a really good resource for that all their lessons are free on their webpage they even have vocabulary so again if you're learning korean for free you get the vocab and the grammar there just through their website now unfortunately you can't download their grammar lessons um they cost like ten dollars per unit but guys each unit is like a whole level so one unit could be the same as the course that i was taking in korea so ten dollars for a whole unit that's not that bad like i i think it's worth it if you like have ten dollars but i yeah but anyway there is like one thing i do want to mention about their resource and that is like the the pronunciation is a little off like there's audio files for each vocabulary word like when it's in the list as well as in the the full example sentences and when it's just the word it's like okay but when it's the full example sentence it's a little awkward and like choppy it kind of sounds like someone recorded each word individually and then they strung them together so the intonation's a little off like it's not bad but it's just not great. So if you're gonna study with that resource, just keep that in mind if you're gonna be using the audio files. The next resource I wanna talk about is specifically for learning vocabulary because I know the last few we've been talking about are like grammar or just like overall general Korean, which is great, but what about vocab? need something vocab specific so this resource is like honestly one that i don't think i could have gotten this far in korean without because it's just helped me learn so much vocabulary and that website is memorize yes i know i talk about it a lot i'm sorry but let me give my little spiel okay so memorize is a website that basically allows you to learn vocabulary or terms or at least that's how I use it. And I think that's how most language learners use it. But anyway, they help you remember content through spaced repetition. And if you don't know what spaced repetition is, I will sum it up as science. It's just science that helps you remember um, terms or whatever content you're learning longer so that you don't forget it, which is really useful. You know, you never want to be like, I studied it, but I forgot because that just feels like a waste of time. I feel the pain. Anyway, so Memorize has two versions. They have a free version, which is the one I've used for literally the past like over five years for learning Korean. And then they have like a paid subscription version. And I won't lie, they have some pretty interesting features in their paid version, but like I haven't needed them. And I don't think you need them unless you just wanna like access that, that other like cool content. But if you're trying to be like zero dollars, you can do it for free. So on the free version, you have access to everyone's like user created courses. Well, the ones that are public anyway. That basically means that someone has probably created, okay, not someone has probably, someone has created multiple courses for how to study Korean. So that resource we talked about where I said like they include vocabulary in each lesson. Yeah, you can go on to memorize and study that vocabulary without like even putting the words in there because somebody already went in there and did it for you so you can just like study with that and some courses even have audio so i remember when i first started learning korean i used a textbook called integrated korean and i used a course that was made by somebody else and they had all the audio files from the textbook in there so when it would be like ew i'd be like ew and they'd be like e and i'd be like <laughs> you know like I would learn the pronunciation through courses like that and I won't lie I think most of the at least up like intermediate and above don't really have audio anymore but a lot of the beginner courses do have the audio so that's definitely like a win because you can't do that with your paper flashcards or you can like create your own courses obviously which is what I opt for because it allows me more control over the words I'm adding and like Sometimes people make a spelling mistake and if it's somebody else's course, you can't correct it. And usually you can't even contact them. So I prefer to make my own courses, but you don't have to. And also guys, I want to mention they have an app, right? And I've gotten a lot of messages saying like, hey, it's not free. They are trying to make me pay. And yeah, if you use the app and you haven't added any like user courses to your dashboard, you won't see them on the app. So you have to go to the website or desktop version first. Look for whatever course you're looking for. So talk to me in Korean, how to study Korean, Ihua, Sejong, whatever. Add it to your dashboard and then it'll show up on your app. So yeah, I'm just spreading that knowledge so you don't have to spend money. <laughs>
Also, if you're not really into Memrise and the way they help you study vocabulary, you can use Quizlet. So Quizlet does pretty much the same thing. They also have user-generated courses. They have like different games for learning the vocabulary and things like that. The only, I think the only main difference with Quizlet and Memrise is the spaced repetition. Quizlet kind of like has little hearts or stars or something. I don't know, it's been a really, really long time since I used Quizlet, but they have like a manual, like, yes, I wanna review this or no, I don't want to review this. So I think that's the only main difference and it's also free. The next resource I wanna talk about is one that I am 99.99% sure is the most popular language learning resource for Korean among beginners, especially beginners that are trying to not spend any money. No shame there. Anyway, that resource is Talk To Me In Korean. And I feel like Talk To Me In Korean has gotten very, very popular because of their free PDF grammar lessons. So unlike the other resources that I mentioned earlier that I said like, oh, they don't let you like download their PDFs or they don't let you download their textbooks unless you're like willing to pay some money. Um, Talk To Me In Korean is different. And they said like, hey, yeah, here, have it. It's yours. And I won't lie, their lessons are very nicely formatted. They have good colors. Like it just kind of like makes the language learning process more enjoyable because there's like happy colors. You know what I mean? With that being said, I also need to mention that in comparison to the other resources that I've like already mentioned, the Talk To Me Korean grammar lessons are shorter and that are shorter because I hate to use this word. Don't come after me if you love Talk To Me Korean. Like, I'm sorry, this is just the word that I think is the most fitting. They're kind of watered down. Like they don't tell you absolutely everything about the grammar structure, which for some people that's fine and they don't care. Uh, but for me, that didn't float my boat very well. The float, my boat was sinking. And that means there are fewer example sentences. That also means there's no vocabulary because like I said, these are grammar lessons and they very clearly tell you these are grammar lessons. So no shame there, but if you're going to be using them as a main resource, as I've seen a lot of people do, make sure that you're also like, while you are improving your grammar skills and your knowledge of Korean grammar, Make sure your like vocab is also going up with that. I have a friend who like solely used Talk To Me in Korean for several years and her like knowledge of grammar was really good. Like she knew more grammar than me. However, her vocab was always down here. In the end, I could actually say more than she could even though she knew way more grammar than me. So if you, again, if you're gonna use them, make sure you're also paying attention to that vocab. So if you wanna use Memrise or Quizlet or a different resource that I've already mentioned for learning vocab, cool. Just I beg you, please, this is me like cupping your face. Please also learn vocab, okay. Another cool thing about their grammar lessons is that each one has like an accompanying podcast lesson that goes over like what's in the PDF. So that's great because you can hear the pronunciation for native speakers. You get like an auditory explanation. It is kind of like a different way of learning. So if you're wanting to multitask, like if you're a student and you need to do the dishes or you also need to go like put your laundry in the communal laundry room or whatever, like you can do that at the same time. You don't have to be sitting down and doing traditional studying. And I think that is a great segue into talking about YouTube channels for learning Korean because I won't lie, I love websites, but also I'm a YouTuber, so I love them YouTubers. <laughs> anyway, Talk To Me Korean also has like a really, really great YouTube channel. So they answer like commonly asked questions. They have a video lessons that you can access for free, like all this content. And I think it's a great place. Like maybe you don't want to subscribe because they upload so much content, but if you ever just like type into the search bar, how to conjugate things in Korean, TTMIK, which is Talk To Me Korean, then one of their videos is more than likely gonna show up. So definitely check out their YouTube channel and follow them on Twitter. If you tweet them a question, there's a good possibility that they'll answer you. Yeah, so that's pretty dope. But anyway, the next resource I wanna introduce you to is one that I found very recently. And guys, I am low key upset with myself that I didn't know about it earlier because they have so much great content, what the heck? And that channel is the Korean Culture Series and Quick Korean by, Korea Cyber University, which I don't know how to best explain this. I guess you could say it's like an, a branch of Korea University. And if you didn't know, Korea University is a top university in Korea. They also have a well-respected Korean language school like on their campus. So I assume it's like an extension of the language school. Honestly, I don't really know. Don't quote me on nothing. Just know there's some kind of relationship there and that should give you like a sense of like, okay, 
it credible. Sorry, I did a lot of flailing just now. But anyway, their YouTube channel is great because they have so many lessons that are like literal lectures. Like, I mean, nice lectures that are meant for you to like watch it as a video. But like, I'm doing the level four, like topic level four lessons, which is upper intermediate. And guys, all their lessons are like 30, anywhere from 30 minutes to like over an hour. Those are very long lessons. And they teach you like vocab and grammar and expressions and they have like dialogues and skits in them. And if you're an intermediate learner, which this video is about beginners, but let me fangirl for a moment. The intermediate lessons and up are all like in full Korean, which is great because once you hit intermediate level in Korean, like you should be learning in Korean. I say that as someone who also uses resources that are in English, but all my Korean lessons that I take like online are like in full Korean. But anyway, that's not the point. So if you're a beginner, you can find lessons that are in English, in Spanish, in Chinese, and I think even in Japanese. So it's really, really great. And they use the topic levels to distinguish like what is what. So topic one would be like absolute beginner to mid beginner. Topic two would go all the way through upper beginner. Topic three or level three is low intermediate and level four is like upper intermediate. So I guess keep that in mind because their leveling system is more official, I would say, more official than the other resources that I mentioned that kind of like came up with their own leveling system. But oh my gosh, I love these. And I can't believe I'm so late to the party on them. The next channel I want to introduce you guys to also comes to you from Korea itself. And that is Learn Korean with Arirang. So Arirang is like a Korean news station and they have like a ton of like different faucets. So I don't know if maybe like they're related to the government, like the Korean government in some kind of way, or they're just like a multifaceted company. I don't really know. And I don't know why I'm like doing a weird dance, um, but their channel, um, the, although it's now inactive and they don't post anymore, they have a lot, like a lot of content for people that are from like absolute beginner level all the way through like upper intermediate, I believe. But anyway, the lessons that they post, I'm pretty sure used to be like broadcasted on Korean TV for non-Korean people to learn Korean. So don't judge, but it's a little old, okay? It has like two hosts and okay, I recently made a video about why I would never learn Satsuri or Korean dialects and I mentioned the Gyeonggi-do accent and I got comments from people being like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know Gyeonggi-do accent was a thing. And I'm like, I learned it from Arirang. Like there were episodes or lessons that I would watch and they'd be like, don't do that, that's Gyeonggi-do accent. Don't do that, that's Gyeonggi-do accent. Don't do that, that's Gyeonggi-do accent. And I was like, it's a whole new world. Okay, I'm sorry, I subjected you to that kind of cruel and unusual uh, torture. Guys, like I mentioned, they have so much content. So definitely go to the playlist section of their channel and look for like season one. The next resource that I would like to uh, chuchan to you, which chuchan means like recommend. So the next resource I would like to chuchan to royal is learn Korean with Go Billy Korean. And I know, I know, I just talked about how much I love his resource in my How I Learn Korean Grammar video, which I'll link for you down below if you're interested in like checking it out. But I really, really, really do love his grammar explanations. Like they're so good. And I really like that he's coming from like a fellow non-native speaker like perspective, if that makes sense. Like all the other resources I just talked to you guys about are Korean like teachers or educators teaching you Korean, which is great. But it's also nice to have like a perspective from someone who has done what you want to do. They can like explain it differently and kind of give you like nuances. So for example, I'm a native English speaker. So when Billy explains things, he kind of like comes with like this, he knows like what I'm thinking, if that makes sense. So I like listening to his explanations. They're very good, very thorough, lots of example sentences. And guys, like he majored in Korean and then lived in Korean for several years. Like he is the, uh, like, what is the word? Like epitome, is that the right word? I'm actually really bad at English vocabulary, but he's like the epitome of the level of Korean that I would like to get to. So I like learning from him a lot. And his channel has like content that goes from like absolute beginner, like you're learning Hangul or the Korean alphabet all the way through advanced, which I don't think I mentioned this for the other resources because this video is for beginners, but a lot of resources, especially like some of the ones that I did mention, stop at intermediate. Like they get you to upper intermediate and then they're like, Taiga, like Taiga Zeo, like see you never. So I like that Billy's like takes you through intermediate. Um, 
so yeah, uh, I love his channel. And guys, he has several playlists that I do want to point out. He has one that is for learning Hangul. So if you are just barely starting to learn them Korean letters, you should go check out that playlist. And he also has one that is for beginners. It's literally like a hundred videos long. So it's like a whole beginner's curriculum. So I'm sorry, but you can no longer say that you can't learn Korean for free. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear no complaining because he gave you literally like a, a course for free. For you he like wrapped it up all nice and was like eagle but anyway you should definitely check out those two playlists i would also like to mention he has a discord server so if you're trying to connect with other like language learners that's a good resource for you um talk to me korean also has one personally i don't know anyone that uses it so yeah if you're into discord servers billy has one and talk to me korean has one so go connect with your fellow learners the next channel i want to recommend is one that you have probably already subscribed to but that channel is korean Anni, and it would be an understatement to say that she has a lot of content about learning korean like an understatement because she has so much content like guys if you go to her channel now and you go to the videos tab and you scroll, you might get a little confused on what's going on. <laughs> Cause right now she's like teaching like really random Korean topics, like where you might be like, this isn't what I need, I'm a beginner. And the reason you see all these videos about like slang and native expressions and idioms and all that stuff coming from her now is because she already made all those videos about like Ian Ga particles and how to conjugate things and basic Korean grammar structures for beginners and stuff like that. Like. She has so much content that like, if you just type in what you need in the YouTube search bar and then put Korean on me, she probably has that exact video. Like I'm not even, I'm not even joking. The next resource I want to talk about is really, really dear to my heart. And that is because, well, it's the resource that I actually used the most when I was a beginner. I actually tracked my study time per resource when I was a beginner. <laughs> so I can tell you for a fact, it is the one I used the most. And that's because it took me from like, my listen, it took my Korean listening skills in particular from K-pop fan who's not interested in actually learning any Korean but knows a few words to like intermediate listening skills in like a span of two months. I mean, granted I was studying a lot, but like that's pretty like significant growth. Guys, that resource, this one you've probably heard of before and that resource is Korean Klaus 101. Yes, like I won't lie. I actually paid for the premium subscription like to their website when I was a beginner and I do think it was highly worth it. But if you're trying to learn Korean for free, you can use their free content. Now, instead of using their website, which I think can get a little frustrating to use if you don't have like a paid subscription to it because you see all the content but then it tells you it's locked and that's like. So instead of the website, use their YouTube channel. They have a lot of the exact same lessons. Like I'm not even joking. They don't remake them for YouTube. Like they're the same as like on the actual website, just on YouTube. And they're really high quality lessons. They have everything from like learning Hangul to like grammar structures and particles and conjugations in general and stuff like that. Like they have a lot of, a lot of content and they post really frequently. So I wouldn't recommend subscribing cause then your feed will get really like spammed with learning Korean content. And I'd also like to mention that if you do happen to like get one of their premium or paid subscriptions, they do have an app. Now the app isn't good or it isn't useful if you're not paying for anything because the app is basically to download their lessons onto your phone or your tablet or whatever. And when I was like, using their paid service, I really found that app very, very, very helpful because I could download my podcast lessons and stuff like that. And I could see all the vocab and the dialogues and everything like that. And it was really, really great. But again, if you're doing like only free stuff, you can't really take advantage of the app that well. And that leads us to apps for learning Korean. So I've mentioned a few through this video already. And I would like to uh, say that I actually made a video specifically about apps for learning Korean a few months ago. So I'm gonna put that in the description box because all my favorite apps are in that video. All of them have paid versions and free versions. So once you start using it, you can kind of like determine if you're interested in paying for it or if you're just not interested in paying for it at all. But since I've done that video, I feel like I've covered apps. And again, this is a collab with my two friends, Chloe and Denai. Hey everyone, my name is Chloe, also known as Strawberry Studies. In this week's video, I'll be taking you through some free resources for learning Japanese. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll see you over on my channel. Hey everyone, Bajia Hao, it's Danai, and I've been learning Chinese for the past few years in London while working, and I'm going to be going through free resources you can use for Chinese this week, but it's going to be free resources that I think you might not have heard of necessarily, or might not have come across, things that kind of took me a bit more time to discover while learning Chinese. So, 
come over and check my channel out if you're interested. So if you're interested in free resources for learning Japanese or Chinese, definitely check out their video and I'll see you guys next time. So, ciao, bye guys. Bye.